Hey, what's up everybody? Real quick, let me know, got a new mic on. Let me know for sure you guys can hear me. I'm gonna start getting rods in the water. You guys can see me, man, this water is nasty out here. Raging water below the dam, green up dam. Give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear me good. Let me know. I ain't got much room, uh, I ain't got much room to cast. So hopefully I don't hook the camera tonight. Using a, uh, this is a heavy action Warrior Cat rod. Got a pin squall 20 on it. Got the old double hook rig on. You can see I got, ended up catching some smaller, smaller bait today. So kind of doubling up on it. That's all I had time to catch. I got a 10 ounce weight on there and a very small area to cast. So if you guys can kind of see back here, we got that the main river coming down and this is basically the first, uh, you know, slack water, calm water outside of the dam. Maybe just a little bit early for this, but I figured I'd be, rather be a little bit early than, uh, you know, and give you guys a heads up of what to do. So. Let's get some baits out there. Tell you what, I'm gonna throw, I got an eight ounce weight on the other one. I'm gonna throw it first. Now on this one, got a big skipjack head. Demon Dragon got an eight ounce weight. And kind of like we did on, uh, at the, uh, the seam line bank video, I'm gonna use this bank or this seam line. Now you can see there's a lot of trash in here where this water is kind of eddying up, but hopefully we can work something out of it. If I fall in, you guys know where I'm at. Send help. I'm just gonna let it sink down there. Feels like it's kind of deep. And I'm gonna let the current settle it down. And I'm gonna try to find me a rock to get this thing under. Well, I tell you what, I had to climb down a mountain, a daggone Billy goat could hardly climb down to get down in here. I'm trying to get this rod where you guys can see it. All right, there's that one. I got a 10 ounce weight on this one here. Whoo, just about went in. <laughs> Whoa. See if I can get this one up here. Right, how's everybody doing tonight? There we go. Jab that thing down on the ground. Lots and lots and lots of trash. Seems like, seems like all year has been a lot of trash. Yeah, 
yeah, we got, I got eight and 10 ounces on, but uh, a lot of current. And all we can do is come out here and try, but uh, it is Tackle Talk Tuesday. We are below green up locks and dams. Uh, we are uh, fishing, if, if you're familiar uh, with the green up lock and dam, there's a pipeline that goes across here and what we're doing is we're the pipeline rocks kind of stick out uh, you know from from the bank from where the green up dam it kind of swoops down in a horseshoe and then points out and you can see it directs a lot of the flow out away from away from this point and it creates a uh, ginormous uh, slack water that just runs parallel with this bank I kind of wish, kind of wish I'd have went farther down. Um, you know, like always, the uh, the current is really heading this nasty trash right here, right here in the uh, point. But uh, all we can do is, you know, really keep at it and see what happens. Got Mr. Stick. Look at there. Whole bunch of stick. <laughs> oh man, that water is nasty out there. Let's get this one back out there. I was going to bring a big rod, a 10 foot rod, but so I could cast farther out, but there just ain't enough room in here. There we go, we're set up now. Now I seen somebody ask about skipjack uh, a little earlier and I actually brought a skipjack rod with me. You can see I got a couple silver and white and red shiny heinies and then a yellow and black one. And this is just on a spinning rod, but uh, I just ain't I ain't even gonna try, it might be a mistake, but as muddy and as hard and nasty as this water is, I don't think they're up here yet. But now they could be. I was up by the dam earlier and I was actually wanting to fish uh, closer to the dam, but there just wasn't no possible way. Hope everybody's doing all right tonight. If you guys, if this is the first time you guys are joining the channel, I want to thank you guys for uh, joining in tonight. Uh, make sure you guys are asking your questions uh, at Chris Souders in the comments, and they'll pop up uh, and they'll be, you know, highlighted a little bit so I can see them a little bit better. Uh, catfish addiction? No, I did not. Uh, did not see it. Uh, how big was it? Uh, if you don't mind, leave the details in the in the comments.
let us know how big it was. Uh, Matt, normally uh, we will start catching them here at Greenup Dam um, between now and the end of the, you know, end of the year, uh, or not end of the year, but end of the month. Um, you know, it's, it's going to get a little bit better. Uh, you know, as as this month progresses and as the water conditions kind of get a little bit, you know, a little bit better. But normally, depending on the year, the winter, how cold it is, how warm it gets, how quick it gets warm, you know, will make things a little bit uh, quicker. You know, a lot of people are catching them, Kentucky, Barkley, um, you know, on that system chain coming up this way, even some on the lower or higher river. So if you progressively watch uh, those people and they're catching, you know, things will progressively move forward up into our area. Uh, like I said, we're usually uh, second to last week of April, first week of May is normally whenever we can, uh, you know, really catch uh, fish or skipjack, sorry. Now, I did say, I did see, uh, I believe it was Hagen said he caught some of the Palin Dam uh, last weekend, which, you know, that's the that's some of the first I've caught, I've heard of that far up. So that's good. That's a good sign that, you know, they're coming up this way. Yeah, Daniel, uh, I mean, you can kind of see, you know, what happens. It's kind of cleared out a little bit right now. So, we, you know, we'll have a little bit of time for our baits to sit here and soak. Uh, that, that current will pull that trash, you know, up into this point right here where it comes together and then it'll suck it back downstream and as it sucks it back downstream you know just make a big circle coming back up um i don't know who that was it went by pretty quick but actually uh steve and i did do a video in gal Pliss on flatheads uh, a few years ago and i'd love to do another one uh, with him if i ever get the chance or opportunity uh, to get back, you know, out on the water with him. Uh, but we caught some really nice fish down there in Galpolis, and it was flathead later in the season, flathead. And if you watch it, if you go back and you watch it, um, you may have to do a little bit of searching for it, but you will see just how small a bait a big flathead will, will take. Uh, Harrison Riverfront Park or Huntington. Um, Brian, no, I haven't. Uh, you know, it's a possibility as, you know, as things, as the year progresses and uh, the fishing kind of gets a little bit. Heard one of my rocks rattle. You guys watching them rods? I guess I could move out of the way a little bit. Let you guys, where you guys could see things good. Larry, uh, I don't have my clickers on, so odds are that, you know, I'll probably, if, if one, if I'm paying attention watching you guys, uh, you guys will get a good laugh by seeing one of these rods go flying through the air out there into the river. Hopefully we catch some. If you guys, uh, last week we was on the Canal River uh, fishing out of a boat, and we actually... Uh, you know, was actually able to uh, catch a little blue cat, and then after that, I stayed out, and uh, the flatheads really turned on that night on the Canal River. So that's a positive. And you know, the reason it got me to come down here was normally those blue cats will start making a move uh, before flatheads will, and you know they, you know, blues are going to spawn before flatheads, and they really start moving before flatheads. So. I want to come down here and kind of test the waters and see, <clears throat> you know, what's happening down here. I've heard of some fish being caught, uh, you know, drifting and, and uh, bumping and things like that. And those are all, you know, good indications that blue cats are, are moving and the water temperature is getting right for those, those moves to really start happening. 
I seen somebody ask about the uh, the boat. <clears throat> um, unfortunately, Sea Ark is, you know, still, you know, still uh, shut down at the moment with everything with the COVID-19 and and everything that's going on. So, unfortunately, you know, as of right now, uh, things are on hold. But hopefully, that'll, you know pick up pick right back up and uh, hopefully Trump will get us back where we need to be and and our economy will come back up and you know everything will go back right back to normal we can only hope hope and pray that's uh that's what we got to do <clears throat> now uh, I know a lot of people I get a lot of questions about bank fishing and you know areas to fish uh places to fish around my area for for bank and for big fish and 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 things like that and this is one of them um one of the things that i hear a lot from people that bank fish is the river's blowed out i can't go um, if you are a if you are a bank fisherman and there is a flooded river like we have right now then then you absolutely need to be on the water uh, this is a good time for you as a bank fisherman to be able to to capitalize on those fish you know having to come up close to the bank okay so uh, take advantage of times like this i know sometimes like this can be uh, discouraging and you know waters like this can be discouraging but you know find you an area that has a slack water and those fish you know will conjugate in these areas out of that main current as much as blue cats like current um, they're not going to you know stay out there in that main uh, main current as fast as it's going i have no idea how fast it's going but it is moving on uh, let's see here was in a debate over line rattles such as demon dragons and double orange balls is there such thing as too much noise from rattles my opinion is more noise more chance for a bite right good question um so a couple things with that you know long before rattles come about i, I caught fish um you know there's no doubt that the fish, uh, you know, eats the bait that we put out there, right? But my argument and my opinion is just this. We want to, as we evolve as cat fishermen, uh, we want to evolve our techniques and our uh, ways to catch them. You know, for the longest time, everybody just anchor fished, right? Uh, for the longest time, everybody thought of planter boards as, you know, uh, salmon and walleye and and things like that so so we're evolving and and with that comes different tackle and different techniques my opinion on the rattles are it you know no matter which one you use okay find the one that you have confidence in uh, for me it is the the demon dragon 3.0 um, I like the Versa rattles which are what you're calling the two like uh look like two balls but <clears throat> i definitely like noise um especially with live bait especially while dragging um it, you know as you drag across something it gets snagged up uh that that rattle i think that it that it in you know it creates a a strike and not just a want bite but a kind of reaction bite um you know I guess I give you know catfish a lot of credit as they are very smart and and as a predator um, that you know they're just not like an old trash fish that picks stuff up off the bottom. You know flatheads really like good live bait, fresh fresh cut bait. Uh, you know channel cats, you know you can catch them on just about anything. Um, big blue cats are really smart as well, but you know I think by using those techniques and those tools we can you know give ourselves a different approach 
at, at different certain periods of time. I think there's always a time for it. I think there's always a uh, specific, uh, you know, thing to all, you know, details within it. Um, do I think there's too much noise? I, I don't know. Um, I normally just use like one rattle, maybe put a Versa rattle on it. Uh, before Demon Dragons were were made, uh, before people started using the the Sierra Spooks, the One Knox, things like that, I used uh, peg floats and I would put glass worm rattles and glass tube rattles inside of it. And that would, you know, make a lot of noise. The downfall with that was uh, blue cats especially would suck that in whenever they would come up and suck the bait in, they would suck that float in as well, crush it, and also crush the glass and taking a potential one, uh, cutting your line and fraying your line. A lot of times I'll get it back, that peg float would be crushed with the worm rattles inside of it, and there would be small <clears throat> nicks, you know, on uh, on the line itself. So I'm a huge fan of noise, whether it be Demon Dragons, Versa Rattles, however you do it. Um, you know, I think it's a it's a good thing, and and I highly recommend you guys try it. You know, I know a lot of people, um, a lot of controversy around it, but you know, I, I definitely say, you know, give it a try. If it's something you got confidence in, you know, keep at it, use it. If it's not, hey, that's fine. You know, it's maybe it not, it may not be for everybody in everybody's situation. Heard somebody ask about that siren in the background. Uh, yeah, they're, I think they're getting ready to lock, lock one through, so you're liable to see a big old bunch of water come up. River's coming up uh, pretty hard. Uh, river's coming up about, about six foot in 12 hours, so about a half a foot an hour, or, you know, half a foot every uh, two hours, I guess. Now, if you guys are watching this and you would uh, you'd be in an area like this fishing from the from a boat, um, you know I'd like to talk about that as well. You can see behind me; you can see that real thick current steam. Uh, you know, I thought I just I thought I got a bite too. I ain't for sure, but uh, you know when the water warms up, you know I like that that 56 to 60 degree mark. Uh, when it comes to blue cats to really start bumping this would be an area that i would come up uh, especially if you wanted to you know learn how to bump uh, this would be a good area right down that seam line um, you know find the area <laughs> i'll get to i'll get to that one in a second but a lot you know that's a good area you know and just bump right down that that seam line uh, the biggest thing with everything is is boat control. Um, you know, if you're going to come up in here and try to bump like that, uh, you know, use a heavier weight to start with. Um, get your boat control uh, right off the bat. Even if that means you come up here and you make a pass down through there without putting a rod in the water, uh, but you're just trying to learn how to keep your boat, learn your trolling motor, uh, things like that. You know, those that boat control is is really, really, really key whenever you're doing something like this. So, uh, I personally have never lost a rod. Hold on a second. Knock on wood. I personally have never lost a rod out of my boat or a boat that I've been in. Now, when it comes to nets, Doc Lang, I have lost many nets because I'm a dumb dumb and won't put a daggone float on them. Me and Doc Lang was on the Mississippi River and in one, well, actually, let's say, let me, let me repeat this. In three days, I lost three nets. I actually bought Bass Pro in Memphis, bought every large net they had because I kept losing them. I've lost, I don't know, I, I've, I've probably lost six big dip nets. 
because you lay them right up on top of the canopy, take off going down the river, and bloop, there they go. Yeah, you know, Roger, you're right. You know, I mean, it don't take much. Fill the fill the handle up with foam. Put a put a pool noodle on them. I mean, even uh, there was one guy putting pool noodle around the rim of the net, and uh, that was a good idea as well. But you know, hey, I still have not done it, Doc. I don't know if you believe that or not, but I still to this day have not done it. I guess that's going to be my project for this weekend. Uh, Jason, so, you know, the big thing with using circle hooks from the bank is, is to, is to kind of have your rod kind of locked down. Um, and watch that rod right, right there. I might be getting a bite on it. <clears throat> Uh, Robert, I'll, I'll get that in just a second, buddy. So, you know, when, if, you're, if you've got a circle hook uh, and you're fishing from the bank, you don't want to jerk it. Uh, you want to kind of just kind of sweep it, uh, you know, and let the fish load it up, uh, things like that, you know, and I know that's hard for a lot of people. Now, if you're somebody that likes to set the hook, then, you know, try a J hook or, uh, you know, I like the double action hooks because a lot of the people that I get in a boat, that get in my boat that have never used diachis or never catfished before, uh, they'll kind of want to set the hook. And and you know that kind of, those double action um, D85s, they they kind of have a little bit of forgiveness. We Sorry, we kind of got interrupted there a little bit. Um, but, uh, but anyway, uh, see here, uh, somebody asked me about, um, monofilament, uh, line, what size I was using. This is, that is 50 pound, uh, slime line. It is very, very good line. Um, you know, there's. I would say three lines that I really trust, really have faith in. Uh, so, Slime Line is one of them, uh, Berkeley Big Game, and Andy Monster. Those three lines are very, very good. Now, uh, I can narrow that down to two, and that would be Andy Monster and Slime Line. Uh, something lately, uh, within the last year, maybe a year and a half, Berkeley has kind of changed a little bit. And for some reason, it doesn't want to lay right on my reels. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are having those issues or not, but it's still good line. But, uh, I, you know, I started trying this uh, slime line. Really like it. We got a pretty good crowd on here tonight. I want to thank every, each and every one of you guys for watching. Now at the beginning of this, you've seen this big old ball of trash come in, right? Well, as you can see, coming back, you know, it has made its way down that line and it's making a big sweep, uh, you know, and it's coming back. So, actually, I had I had a call from uh, a, a couple people that watched the show, and you know, I got some bank rod holders on the way. I'm actually anxious to get them and try them. Um, so hopefully they'll they'll be here before too long. Uh, now somebody asked about leader or said something about leader line. Uh, Jason, uh, give me just a second, and I will. Uh, we'll talk about the catfish crazy stuff. Hey, now that now I got both rods over there. So somebody started talking about uh, leader line a second ago. So elite, this is uh, I usually used to use Andy Monster, 
leader line. Love it. Still great stuff. Um, but I've been been trying the slime line. Uh, this is 80 pound. Um, I like it because it comes in this little, you don't have to put a rubber band or anything on it. Just cuts them off. But anyway, I've got 80 pound uh, slime line, leader line on. Seems to be doing good. Uh, I figure it's going to be just as good as their monofilament. I've been running their monofilament now for almost a year, and uh, or just over a year, somewhere around in there, and like it a lot. So I'm going to guess that this stuff is just as good. But if you have any someplace you can buy Andy Monster, you know, great line as well. So I uh, had somebody ask about the Catfish Crazy stuff. And I don't know about you all, but I am super, super, super excited about it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we was going to have a big gathering. And, uh, you know, uh, for the premiere of Catfish Crazy, which is May 4th. Um, but unfortunately, social distancing, we can't. Um, but, you know, sometime this year, we're going to try to, you know, do something uh, for it. But anyway, uh, May 4th, um, Catfish Crazy premieres, and it's at 8.30. Uh, make sure you guys go to Catfish Crazy TV on social media. Um, that's YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram. They are doing a countdown right now to uh, of the days. I think we're down to like 20 or 21 days, something like that. And yeah, I'm super, super stoked about it. I, I've been... I finally started getting some of the shows, and they started letting me see some of what was what was happening. Uh, man, they are they're doing good. Uh, we got a we got some improvement we can do uh, as soon as they as soon as uh, this country gets back to where it's at. We're going to be back on the road. Uh, I've got some big big plans for season two, um, but we caught some really nice fish last year. Uh, one of the biggest fish of the year that we caught last year on the show, uh, on film, will be in the first episode. Uh, so those details will be coming out, but uh, there's some giveaway stuff that's gonna be happening this week, and I think next week, and, and more as stuff, uh, stuff comes along, um, you know, for you guys to, to win. Uh, I seen somebody, uh, they said something about super chats. So I've, I've been thinking a lot about this and I want you all's opinion. Um, if you guys would like for me to enable super, uh, super chats, I will, um, you know, but uh, I, I want that to be, you know, you all's decision um, on whether we enable that or, or not. I, I don't want to, um, how do I put this? I don't want anybody to, to feel like they have to do something because they don't. Uh, you know, in absolutely no way, shape, or form. Um, but I would be, <laughs> you know, I'm grateful for everything I've got now, and I couldn't imagine, you know, what that, what that enables, so. Uh, Darren, you know, actually, I don't know if we will or not. Uh, I would love to. Um, you know, I might, you know, reach out to him and see if, uh, if his schedule opens up. I would love to hit the water with Steve again. Uh, Steve is, you know, somebody that I looked up to, you know, whenever, back whenever I started, you know. Um, you know, Steve is kind of, uh, uh, I don't want to, I wouldn't say, I won't, don't want to say a godfather, but, uh, you know, he's, he's, been, he's been a very successful person um, in catfishing and, and helped a lot of folks out. So I absolutely would love to do another show with that man. He's a wealth of knowledge and, and any, any time, uh, you know, I would love to jump in a boat with him. Uh, next week, we will probably be back uh, if the water is in Faribault. Uh, if the water is in fair condition, you know, hopefully I'll be back out on the water again next week. And uh, I might be on the boat, hopefully be able to get some more uh, flatheads in the boat next week. Uh, get back out on that Canal River. 
Let's see. Had some questions fly by. Uh, real. Let's see. Now I get a lot of real catnappers. I get a lot, a lot of questions about this reel. And buddy, I tell you what. Now you all know, I, I really like pin, uh, pin squall, uh, squalls, size 20, level ones. Love them for the price. Uh, you know, tackle bandit sells them for. Right off the top of my head, I can't remember, but it's like around 100 or under 100. Um, you know, you, you can't beat a pen squall. But if this reel was still on the market, Abba Garcia, I know you will never, uh, never see this video probably, but I wish that that Abba Garcia would still make this blue and black Fathom, or not Fathom, but uh, Alpha Mar. Uh, this reel. I have, I think, eight or 10 of these reels all together. I think I've got eight that still work, and I think I got two that I use for parts. Um, if I find them on eBay, I usually try to buy them up, but this is a uh, Abu Garcia uh, Alpha Mar. It's the blue and black. They stopped making these several years ago, but wonderful reel, uh, you know, I would still use these every, I'd have this reel on every rod that I had if they still made them. Uh, super smooth drag. I would compare this reel to what most people know as the Fathoms today. Uh, but whenever we bought, whenever I bought these reels, it was kind of like, oh, oh, I hope you guys, see, I hope that camera picked that up. I missed it. I missed it. I was dang going it. <laughs> oh, that's the way it goes, though. Hey, I, I was I was talking, talking, not not paying attention, right? But uh, but no, you know, for uh, you know, for a, a solid reel, if if Abu Garcia still made these, I this is the reel I'd have. But you know, for a reel. Uh, from my opinion, the best reel on the market, you know, for price and things like that, you know, everything combined would be that squall, pin squall. I know, stonefly, I know. We are just talking about that. Somebody just asked me how to, uh, you know, circle hooks from the bank and I would daggone if I didn't do what I, what I preach, what I tell people not to do. I daggone yanked on it, jerked on it. Uh, Gerald, Columbus. I I don't really fish around Columbus, uh, but uh, yeah, Harley, that was what not to do. For anybody watching, don't do that. You will not catch that fish. I'm gonna throw it back out there. While I'm talking, I'm throwing it back out. Can't stand it. Can't stand it. Maybe I'll get lucky. He'll come back for it. I'm gonna say it wasn't a fish. I'm gonna say it wasn't a fish. It was not a fish, it was a stick. It was a stick. I tell you what though, if I'd have had that joker underneath a, a rock, he's liable to have pulled it out. All right, yeah, logfish. <laughs> Peace City, that's right. He's seen, he seen the log float by. He's seen the log grab my, my line. It was a logfish, logfish. But yeah, but uh, yeah, let's talk about reels. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's the reel that's on that one. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Jason. It was an elephant. It was an elephant. Did you guys see that elephant? He was out there getting up peanuts. They're bull and peanuts out there. 
That's right, Roger. I, uh, you know, odds are I probably won't sleep tonight because of that one. Uh, I love each and every one of you guys. I want you to know that. Yeah, the fathoms, uh, you know, the, the pin fathoms are absolutely amazing reels. Uh, you know, definitely one of the smoothest casting uh, drags, you know, power-wise, um, ratio, all that stuff. A fathom is a wonderful, wonderful reel. And, you know, but something I, I like to use something that I can that, that I feel comfortable telling people uh, price wise that they can go out and and buy and pen you know pins are are wonderful uh, fathoms are wonderful reels uh, they are a little on the higher side for most people and you know the squalls for a lot of people there it's going to be a reel that's going to last them a lifetime it's going to be uh, it's going to be a reel that they're going to be able to handle uh, anybody, you know, any fish from any body of water. So, uh, so definitely check them out if you guys are in the market uh, for them. Uh, Tacklebandit.com. I know he sells them. Uh, a lot of times he sells out of them pretty quick. So, uh, if if you guys are looking at them, take a look at them. Uh, now, somebody put on there that they were 90 bucks. Um, not sure uh, what it was at. If you guys do know, you know that price where it was at things like that. If you didn't already, uh, please leave it in the comments. Good question, Jason. Um, when it comes to uh, line on my reels, uh, I definitely prefer high vis uh, for a couple reasons. One, uh, whether you're sitting on a bank or you're sitting on a boat, uh, high vis is going to give you two things. You're going to know where your lines and how your lines are spaced. So if your outside lines are getting swept down really quick, you know that maybe, hey, I need to put more weight on the outside lines. Um, uh, uh, two other things. One, if a flathead tries to uh, be sneaky and go kind of upriver and out, you'll, see, you'll be able to see that line and what that line is doing. Uh, thirdly, if you're fishing at night and, and you know, use a black light, uh, you know, summer's coming up, bugs are going to be coming out, mosquitoes going to be coming out, you know, blue and black lights are a heck of a lot better than white lights when fishing at night off of a boat uh, because they don't attract so many bugs. So, so that's, that's, you know, my go on that. All right, let's see here. Yeah, that's that's true, Darren. A piece of PVC, you know, I don't know. It would probably go in right here. This is kind of sandy and rocky. I'd probably be able to get it in and stick him right down in and not be able to uh, not lose anything. But, but I tell you what, you can't, you can't beat that back there. That back there is one beautiful picture that God's creating right now. Love it. Peaceful. It's a beautiful, beautiful afternoon, even though I even though I missed a fish. I tell you folks what, we've been on here a good time. And uh, I want to thank you guys. We've had a good crowd on here tonight. Uh, as always, if you got questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, that's where I get my information to do the tackle talks. Uh, going to try to do a lot of these from the bank, a lot of them from the boat this year. And, you know, you guys have kind of requested that. I've been getting a lot of uh, feed, good feedback from this. So we'll do that as, as long as we can, as long as we can. And, uh, you know, Matthew, I, I may, may take you up on that and enable Super Chats, uh, you know, and see what happens. Um, I appreciate you bringing that up. And I appreciate everybody for watching. I want to thank everybody tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys got some laughs, learned something, uh, got, you're able to take something away from this to go back and catch yourself some dinner or trophy fish or whatever you want to do. Uh, till next week, thank you guys for watching. 
as always, if you need somebody to pray for you, if you've got somebody you want me to pray for, or if you want to hear more about the Word of God and what He has done for us and me and my family, please look me up. Please let me know. Send me a message. Till next week, I want to thank you guys. God bless. Keep it real, and we'll keep it on the water.